We're going to spend this movie getting a better understanding of how the saturation circuit works in the mix mode and how it differs from other devices, such as the saturation inside the Moog Mother 32 itself. Right now I have the Sawtooth Wave brought into the mix mode. I'll put the Moog Mother on drone so you can hear it. I want to have its signal turn up all the way. Its input green trace looks exactly the same as the output yellow trace. You can see the slight difference there when I reduce the level of the input signal. When I kick in the saturation circuit, you'll see that the top of that input waveform is getting chopped off a little bit, but not in a completely flat line. You might be used to thinking of clipping distortion as being the same as saturation. Clipping distortion just mows off the tops and bottoms of signals. But in this case, there's a bit of a break point and a bit of a slope, and it causes some slightly different harmonics. You can see in the spectrum display, this is the sawtooth with saturation on. And this is the sawtooth without saturation. There's a bit more strength in the high harmonics. This becomes a lot more obvious with signals that have fewer harmonics to begin with, like the triangle wave, and I'll get to that in a minute. The other thing I wanted to point out here is that these LEDs show how much you're clipping in both the positive and negative excursions of that signal. Now, since the sawtooth wave is a symmetrical waveform and spends as much time above zero as it does below zero, both those LEDs are the same. It's easier to see this with the pulse wave. A pulse waveform doesn't really benefit from saturation because it already has flat tops and bottoms, but I'm going to use it briefly to show you the difference in clipping the top and bottom. Here's the output of the square. I'm going to turn off the waveform for the triangle and turn on the waveform for the input square. I can see the difference between their signals. The saturation circuit reduces this level a little bit. No saturation circuit, no restriction in level. There's the saturation again. Now watch what happens to the plus and minus LEDs for the saturation circuit, and also the colored LED for input 2 as I change the pulse width. Changing the pulse width makes the waveform asymmetrical. They'll spend more time on one excursion than it does the other. At one extreme, the waveform spends far more time on a negative excursion than it does a positive excursion, and the LED for that input channel goes to red. At maximum pulse width, the waveform spends much more time above zero than it does below zero. You'll see the difference in the strength of the saturation LEDs, and you'll notice that its input LED has gone to more of a bluish purple color rather than the mixture that's somewhere around pink or magenta. The mix mode also, as you may have noticed in the previous movie, changes colors on the input LED whether or not you're inverting the signal compared to not inverting it. That's particularly useful if you're running control voltages through this. And yes, this can be a wave shaper for control voltages as well. You can put a triangle LFO through this and mow off that top. But speaking of the triangle waveform, I'm going to make one more change here. Turn off the square wave from the mother. Turn on visibility for the triangle wave from my disting. I'll turn up its level halfway. I'll turn off the saturation circuit for now. Triangles are similar to square waves in that they only have odd harmonics. This is tuned, well, a little bit below middle C right now, but around 200 hertz for the first harmonic or the fundamental. The next visible harmonic is around 600 hertz or three times the frequency of the fundamental, five times for fifth harmonic and so forth. That's what we would expect from a triangle wave. Now it so happens that the Mother 32's analog circuitry will start performing its own clipping if you overdrive its input. Its own waveforms will not drive the mother into saturation, but if you're using a hot signal like the output of a disting, which can go plus or minus eight volts, and start increasing its level, listen to the sound and watch what happens to the harmonics. Now remember, the yellow trace you're seeing on the data is the output of the mix mode before it's going through the Moog. The Mother 32 is introducing some distortion. As I start driving to saturation, you'll notice that the second harmonic suddenly appears in the spectrum coming out of the Moog Mother 32. The third harmonic is actually suppressed. We have a very different sound than the unsaturated sound. I'm going to change my computer display to show its waveform, since this is the output from the Moog Mother 32, and compare it to the input waveform from the disting. This is the waveform going into the Moog. The green waveform on the other display is the waveform coming out of the Moog. To start driving into saturation, I get to the point where I'm a little bit above plus or minus five volts. Each line on the data is two volts. You notice that the Moog Mother 32 alters the waveform asymmetrically, it clips the top differently than the bottom, and again we have quite a different sound. And the harmonic spectra is quite different as well. 
That behavior is very different than the behavior of the saturation inside the mix mode. I'm going to turn on the saturation circuit for the mix mode. You'll see the waveform has some slight rounding on the data's output, and indeed we lost some harmonics on the spectra display. But as I increase the drive inside the mix mode, I will go deeper into saturation on the mix mode, changing the harmonic mix going into the mother. As I increase this, we hear some high harmonics start to appear there. And you see the mixture really change on our spectrum output display here. There's this dead zone right through here where we suppress the third harmonic a bit and the fifth gets strong. As we keep pushing, their harmonic mix keeps changing. Now we're driving into full saturation on the mix mode circuit, but since we're never getting above plus or minus five volts, we're not saturating through the Moog because we've not gotten into its range where it starts rounding off the signal. So you can get different sounds from your equipment just by managing the levels and how hard you push things. That's why I really value signal level controls and particularly ones that maybe have some boost or have their own saturation circuitry. Now the shape of the saturation in the mix mode is determined by a pair of trimmers on the circuit board. They're set at the factory to a setting that they think is pleasing. You can change the trimmers if you like. However, there's also a mix mode expander which pulls out those trimmers to two separate front panel controls, and even more importantly, puts them under voltage control for you to play with. And that's what we'll explore in the next movie.